In this blog video, we are going to talk about DHCP versus DNS lecture and lab. First, you are going to watch the lecture and then we are going to perform the lab. Now, let me remind our members that this is going to be targeting IT support level skills, not systems administration, because for that, you will have to go to systems administration courses and roadmaps to learn advanced DHCP and DNS related skills. This is for people who are getting into IT support or would like to know more about DHCP versus DNS at the IT support level. So go ahead, right click on this, open a new link and watch the video. And in the same blog, you will be able to actually access the same lab that we are using. Once you open this blog and you're watching a video and if you would like to replicate uh, with your light membership or premium membership you can click on launch sandbox and this will open the lab and this is the exact same lab that we are using in this video so you should be able to replicate it if you have your home lab you can also do that if you have um, a home active directory and lab available you can actually replicate the things from this video as well so another concept which is the dns very important so when you will type www.jobskillshare.org, you are familiar with this name, but your computer not. Because we know the computer always know the language of IPs. So this is how DNS comes handy. It will resolve from name to IP. But why? Because the next time if you are going to search the, again jobskillshare.org it is not going to resolve uh, the same ip because it, it is already have this information it's going to cache it right exactly exactly this so uh, the first thing it's going to do uh, when you will type uh, www.jobskillshare.org it is going to search into its host file which is located in c windows system 32 and then slash etc folder inside this folder you will see this host file you can right click and open it as a notepad and then you can see we have multiple um, the addresses that is uh, mapping with the name as you can see the host files is a local file available as a part of an operating system and used to map IP addresses corresponding to the domain names. But for this host, it is not uh, automatically or going to populate it, this information. You have to manually, manually type. Like uh, for let's say, uh, you will type www.jobskillshare.org here, and you can correspond it with the public IP. Let's say 67.5 or something. Yeah, so and I'll, I'll give you I'll give you another yeah. example of this host file in, in a real world environment. Look, if you're going to jobstashare.org right now, you're gonna go to a production IP that is running on, right? What if I have a second jobstashare.org a server that we are actually using it for testing purpose, but I want to use the same domain. I want to use everything the same way, right? So what would I do? I would basically come to this file. And I will use the second IP of that server, meaning like whatever public IP address or it could be a private IP address in the same network. And I could just associate that IP with the job skill share. So on this machine, if I type it again now, what will happen? It's going to go to the second server where it has a new code or whatever. I want to test it, right? We use this. Uh, and to be honest, this is a very common thing for sysadmins or uh, systems engineers. They usually do this kind of stuff all the time uh, or developers do. Okay. Question, if you're doing um, flush DNS, is, are you clearing it from here? No, from it won't file? be. No, this is kind of like saved in this file. Got it. Okay, so there is another troubleshoot, uh, troubleshoot uh, tool tip. Basically, uh, have you ever come across uh, with this uh, issue? Let's suppose uh, you are typing uh, from web browser www.jobskillshare.org. Uh, you cannot see uh, the web page in the browser. It is basically saying uh, we couldn't find uh, this website. But then you can come to the command prompt, CMD command prompt, 
and then you just ping the ip for that uh, job skill share org and it is giving me reply have you ever come across with this issue yes so that is basically uh, related with the dns issue so the solution for that first try to do ip config slash slash dns uh, if it is uh, resolved then it's good if it isn't then uh, it means the problem is with your access point cache then you need to either restart or just there is a reset button if you are familiar with the configuration then you can take this risk by just pressing the reset button and after that this problem will be solved uh, yeah normal I, normal yeah. home routers you don't get that kind of like you don't, you don't, you can't just flush something in there you have to reset it and usually that's kind of like the fix for most of these issues you know yeah and sometimes this problem is also can be solved by just ch changing or hard coding uh, the the dns uh, uh, the ip information okay got it so the second stage is if uh, the host file or your computer machine does not have uh, uh, information about some particular website let's say jobskillshare.org the host machine does not have information the second thing it is going to ask from the router because the router also has some kind of dns cache and if the router has information it, it is going to uh, directly give you a reply for that so what but what in case if the even the router does not have this information it goes to mm -hmm. i think it's a uh, it goes i know it goes out to like a server or the closest okay yes server. it will go to the server yeah uh the crystal if you have any answer or something um, i can add that it go to the resolver who exactly. have really yes the resolver it will go to the resolver and then resolver will take care of everything which is i'm going to cover in the next slide so i'm taking the example of jobsshare.org which is also known as fqdn fully qualified domain name uh if i'll go a little more in detail of this concept for the dns domain name uh, as we have seen that host host computer does not have information then the router does not have any information then what is going to happen when you will type www.jobskitchet.org every url has a the dot at the end which is invisible which is basically pointing out to the root server so we are sending our request to root server and we are looking for this information the ip for this one now the root server is intelligent enough it will check uh, the last portion of your uh, website and it will send to the tld which is known as the top level domain so in in uh, can you tell me in this uh, case jobskillshare.org what is our top level domain .org yes exactly it will not send here .com and .net because this is on uh, org tld this thing so after that the the org is nothing but a server it's a hardware apply may be sitting somewhere far away then it has these archives or the catalogs or the files it will go through and will search specifically for the job skill share so let's say it find job skill share and it will send me to the sub level domain which is nothing but the hosting server
of course this website is sitting somewhere it has some contents that is located somewhere which is this hosting machine so at this stage it has a kind of public ip or the ip that is being used to access job skill share so it is going to send back the same information to my host machine and which i'm going to show you as animation uh, there you will get the better idea and these things are called leaks so these all ww things are known as the leaks so if i take you to the next slide uh just to stop that's why i'm using this right click so here we have normal dns resolution uh this is a host machine looking for job skill org this is a resolver which has no idea what job skill org uh, public ip address is so we know that the first thing is going to do is send to the root server root server will look for uh, the last three uh, the after dot which is saying uh which is talking about the top level domain which is saying that you have to go to the org server so what will happen next as you can see yeah so it sent back to the resolver you need to go to the org server so it went to the org server so it's kind of like it's filtering it first by dot yes. org and then it's going to look for like Exactly, yes. exactly. Okay, cool. Then next step is the all server will find out this is job skill share server. So you need to go back to the job skill share server because that is having the public IP 104.223.9197.100. So after that, now it will the public ip has been resolved and it will be given to the host machine now at this point so this is the whole idea of you know uh, giving you information one by one that now this time uh, the host machine does not need to go to the server ser uh, root server org because now it has uh, the public ip of job skill share so the and, last step and at this yeah. and at, at this point because now it has that information and if you guys go back to my example before this is where the caching started right because now it knows about the ip it knows about the, the content and stuff like that and if i was to change my ip address right now my dot org probably would need to be updated as well like that's something that that automatically gets updated you don't go there to to the authoritative uh, DNS servers and you do this. So you don't do that, right? This is something that you tell your providers or DNS providers or where, whichever, wherever is your site hosted, they will have some kind of, uh, you know, name resolutions type of fields where you have to put that. But this is my new DNS server. This is my new IP address. And I want you to update it. So it, it takes about what, uh, come around 24 hours, right? To, yeah. For it to work, but sometimes it's very quick. Usually they say 24 hours. Well, I had a, a user come back to me say, you're changing this stuff. Can you make sure it happens in 15 minutes? You know what I said in response? In response, I say, no, it's going to take 24 hours because I am not respond. I'm not going to give an answer yeah. of 10 minutes while the internet is telling me 24 hours, even though it happened in five minutes, to be honest. But that's where you, you and like learn these little things. So then it will help you in future because this process is going to tell you how you're going to respond to a user in the in the future as an engineer okay yeah so at this stage means uh, the host machine has resolved the uh, ip address uh, which is core related to job skill share next time it will go directly So when it comes to DNS, we have uh, some terminologies we use like A record. And I'm sure that in your test lab out, you are going to uh, come across with these. If not, you are going to. 
uh, the A racket is nothing, just your IPv4 information. Then we have quad A racket. So wherever you see these quad A, uh, just quickly, uh, this thing pop up into your mind that is talking about the IPv6 addresses. And then we have this C name record, and this is also known as canonical name. The, the chances are that the website you have like jobskillshare.org is your main domain, main name of your domain. Then it could have the subdomains like dot carrier or could have like portals, but your main domain name is this job stitch here. Under that you are creating multiple domains, which is known as canonical name. As you can see record is used in the domain name system to create an alias, this is known as alias. Then last but not least, which is MX record. As you can see, this mail exchange record is an entry in your DNS zone file, which specify mail server to handle a domain email. So in your, uh, let's say in a Windows environment, uh, in your server, you will mention uh, with the MX record, uh, you know, uh, hard coded, you will hard code the IP address of your mail exchange server in your environment, in your environment. So uh, your host machine, so those who are looking for exchanging the emails, they have better idea and understanding where to go. So that is the reason we use MX Packet. In terms of um, real world example stores these records, um, this is going to be pretty much a very normal ticket for you if you work in an environment where they call you a network engineer but you do everything. Like you're a one man uh, shop type of thing, right? Mm -hmm. You may be doing like, you may be, you may be doing all this education towards Cisco and everything, but you may, you may get hired by a small company and they just you, let you do everything. So why would you need to know this stuff then? Hey, uh, we got this uh, Cisco chat thing going on from Cisco devices. Uh, we need to give it a proper name. You can't just give it an IP address, right? No one's going to remember that. Oh, uh, hey, we, we have this uh, website that people have to reset their phone, uh, you know, uh, passwords because that's a Cisco device, but it has some kind of web interface. So you need to give it some records. Not just that, it could be anything. If you are dealing anything with web servers and, and you are in charge of that because you're an engineer, then you will be heavily involved in DNS. I can, I can guarantee you on that. But again, this is something I want to tell people that this is more of a systems administration side, even though you need to know everything about it as a network engineer, because sometimes you get into DHCP, sometimes you get into a DNS, you work with systems administrators, you work with other IT technicians, you just get into it and you know this at the basic level and you do your thing so you can make your equipment works, right? Kamran, most likely yes. a network engineer is kind of like quickly going into a DHCP, quickly going into a DNS and boom, 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 there's, he's gonna change what he wants and boom, he's gonna start to finish his, his work. But if you were, like I said, that engineer that you're all, all uh, one man IT type of thing, then of course this is gonna become a, another piece of it. So I wanna remind people that if you're gonna have to go to a lot deeper in DNS and web servers and things like that, then that's a systems administration skills, which is also that we are gonna cover in this, uh, in JSS uh, platform. But maybe not as like hardcore as a sysadmin, for network engineering course just want to give you a little you know heads up on that okay thank you Danish, for the clarification so let's do a demo uh the tool ns lookup is a simple but a very practical command line tool which is physically used to find the ip address that correspond to the host so we're gonna go through some commands which are these one uh we will go one by one
So can you see the command prompt? Because sometimes it's not visible. Yes. Yep. Okay, right. uh, we can go into the NS lookup. I just type the NS lookup. So the first thing it uh, it find out is uh, this is my default gateway. The router or the access point, whatever you want to name it. And it couldn't uh, resolve the name of this one because maybe there's some kind of uh, some firewall is preventing them to resolve the name. So after that, for example, if I am interested to look for these things, these things for some particular website, let's say job skills here, or I can mention my the X company. So you have to first mention what uh, I'm looking for, for let's say job skill share dot org. It is going to give me the information in detail. So this is the aliases we talked about, C name, and these are all the public IPs the job skill share is using. These are the IPv6, and these are the IPv4. If we want to go a lot in detail, just let's do this. You have to type set type is equal to C name. And now do job skill share dot org. So it is going to give me the canonical name of that. Maybe you will be confused if I give you a very clear example like uh, we have uh, one website for the because uh, i'm very fond of cricket uh we have quick info we get the information about the cricket scoring uh which has uh, you know the old server and the name of that one was crick info.com But then they have migrated to another domain name, which is now considered and known as ESPN Greek Info, Greek Info .com. So in that case, let's see what happens. In other way, they made a lot of money. <laughs> they got bought by ESPN. Yes, exactly. So we are looking for canonical name and just type www. Uh, info.com so as you can see they had this name before but now they own the canonical name which is espn quick info.com that's actually really cool to find a little history from a command line right that's the nice yeah. way to, to get some history Then we talk about set type A and you are at this time wise enough what in the last uh, slide I talked about what is A, which is nothing but the IPv4 information. So set type is A and do www.jobskillshare.org. It is just going to give me the IPv4 addresses of the public addresses of uh, which correlate with the job skill share. If I am interested in IPv6, then you have to do site type A with the quad A and do the same thing again. Now you are this time you are going to get the IPv6 addresses. If you are interested to know about the what is the mail exchange server, uh, you can do set type is equal to MMAX. And this time I'm gonna use my company name, which is journey.com. And if you hit the uh, enter, you will see it was it is using two mail exchange servers. Now, guys, this is this is actually very important commands right here. As a network engineer, sometimes you just don't have capability to just open a web browser and then open links or find different type of open free links. You know, you we we have done that. Many of us actually do this on a normal day to day basis, right? We have some set of free links 
in our favorites and we go in there, we put all this information and it, it returns that information for you, right? But what if you're in an interview and they, they say, you can use a link. I want you to find an exchange. I want you to find uh, these air records. I want you to do it from a command line because we don't let you just go to a public website and put our company's information in there, right? Not a lot of companies will like that. If it's a very secure company, they will never let you do that actually. So knowing this from a command line as an engineer is super important. I'm sure you all have used NS Lookup, but even myself, usually we don't go into this kind of details into just NS Lookup like that or, or A records like that, right? So practice is the key right here. You have to kind of find jobs to share some other, other websites and try to gather information. How much can I gather from this uh, command line tool? That's going to really, really help you uh, when you're actually working yeah. in an environment that, that doesn't let you go out too much, you know? And in the real uh, working environment, I, I can give you an example which, is, which correlate with this uh, thing, type MS. Uh, when I was working as a network administrator, we had to give uh, the SMTP address to the Outlook. If you have come across Outlook, you will see there is one section you have to mention the SMTP, uh, the mail exchange server information of your, uh, the mail exchange server basically. So how you can get the information? The first thing either you can, uh, uh, if you have access to the control panel of your website, then you can go and you can find out uh, what is the SMTP address, which is uh, pop 10, pop 10 kind of, Thing you, you can see or other way you can just use this command set type mx and you can see it is telling me what server is that which is using basically smtp.asia.secureserver.net so i can type this thing here and then this is how i will be able to connect with my email Then last but not least, this set type is PTR. This is a pointer racket. And uh, this is also, um, you can call it like uh, the reverse DNS lookup. Previously, we are trying to find a IP, okay? Uh, but now this time I'm going to give the IP to resolute the name. So what you can do, you can do set type is equal to PTR which is pointer racket. And then um, let's say you can type 8.8.8. .8 and in return, what it gave me the DNS.google. So this is a pointer racket. Uh, whatever we were doing earlier, it's just the irreversible of what we were doing before. So with the help of IP, we just resolve the name, okay? For practice, you can click on the launch sandbox if you're watching this video from blog or let's say if you want to access this from your practice labs, you can click on practice labs in the search types 2019 sandbox and then you can click here. It is basically the same thing clicking here or clicking on this button. This will take you to the sandbox. Let's go ahead and launch this lab. So now we have this lab. As you can see in the practice lab, we already get a domain controller uh, and we already get other machines that are connected to this domain controller. So by default, we have some sort of connections and DNS type of things are working in this lab. So let's see, we're going to turn on all these lab and I'm going to show it to you. So let's go ahead, turn on all of this. And at this point, we're not covering anything Linux. So we'll leave that and I'll wait for this lab to come up. It does take a little, a uh, few seconds to come up because these are real systems, real machines. And there you go, one system just showed up. So right now we have this PLAB DC01. By now you already know what is Active Directory, these machines and everything, I don't need to explain that. This is part two course, you probably have done a lot of these labs before in part one. So uh, we, we will not waste our time explaining anything basic at this point. So when I mentioned in the beginning that as an IT support professional, you will not be getting access to a server where the DNS is, 
this is something a sysadmin will be getting access i'm talking about this server in real systems you will not get access to this server you will get access to a powerful machine which is going to be it support machine you will have a lot of access with uh, somebody creating the windows 10 for you and then they will give you access username and password you will have a lot of access but then you will be accessing certain features like active directory limited um, group policy limited depending on what they want to give you from this machine you can access it right so dns uh, uh, type of skills again like if there is a dns issue with the server so this is not your issue you just have to know that this is outside of your skill set or this is outside of your access and then you will assign that ticket to a systems administrator so then where do we really need to learn about dns as an it support professional normally if somebody wants to test you for it interview IT support interview or maybe you got a basic call with the engineer remotely and engineer say hey I want you to add this specific IP address in your client machine or your machine because I want to test something for this specific issue so then where do you need to change DNS settings in Windows 10 so there are many ways to get to that DNS section where you're working with an engineer and they say hey can you change this IP address for DNS and they'll give you the IP address the easy way is to run a command like this just type cmd right click and run as administrator and in your command line you can type this uh, command which is basically ncpa just like that you're going to type it ncpa dot cpl and enter so when you enter you see it just directly opens an ethernet without you going through so many different steps or you could open control panel and click on view network settings so usually when you open a control panel home page it looks like this this is something you can search in the search right now click on control panel go to network internet then click on view network status and task in the new methods of course new screens also comes with a way to do this by open network and settings and then there is basically ethernet as well and you can open it from here but of course uh, in the new settings if you have a administrator account local administrator it may give you an error like this one let me show it to you you have to log in and you, you can change this permission from group policy or local policy but you don't have to do that right now if you can open it through that command line i think i suggest you to do that so now again we are going to type this command we're going to open it there you go so we right click so now you, the engineer expect you to know this skill right they're going to say hey i got this ip address i want you to change the IP address in DNS so you right click you go to properties and you go to TCP version v4 uh, and we are going to basically click on properties and then there you go there is this DNS server right here so this is important because if you don't know this then the other engineer may expect you okay you don't know a, a very basic skill right here because they do troubleshooting they have different needs for this to happen maybe they cannot take a hold of that machine remotely while you're on that machine physically and you opened it for that engineer and they want you to put these ip addresses because they need to get into that machine somehow whatever the reason is so there's a ip addresses we're going to touch this later in our different project but here's the dns right here if i remove this dns from here then it may not work right so if, right now it's basically grayed out if i removed it I, it may not work and and that's how uh things can stop working but since i have it here that where i know that i can get to this place and and put it for the client or the engineers and then they can take over whatever they want to test the next thing is maybe they want you to go to the advanced settings and they also want you to add a dns right here so this is another section where some companies may want you to put ip addresses um, you know server addresses in in this section where you can add it right here in this section uh, and that's where things can um, uh, basically when they say hey I want you to go to a DNS but I want you to go to an advanced DNS sec uh, settings so then how do you know these things that this is what we are doing right now so you will be doing this type of things with other people if they require you to know this knowledge another common request you can get from a engineer or systems administrator if you're working with them remotely and then they don't have access to your computer they may ask you can you tell me the dns address on this machine so yes you uh went to the ethernet that i showed you first that's one way but in many companies we're using 
uh, you know, DHCP, which you're going to learn after this chapter as well, which is automatic assignment of that IP address. So this means you are going to get an IP addresses automatically and also the DNS address is automatically assigned because it's, th it's done through the network. So when your computer is connected, when somebody connects your computer to that specific uh, internet, for example, just look at your own home computer. If you go to your home computer and you open network access, most likely you will not see any addresses. That's because your router at home uh, has everything automatically done. So when you say, I want to connect to this Wi-Fi, it gives you IP address and it also gives you the DNS address. So you don't have to, you will not see manually in that ethernet that I showed you first. So now that could be an interview quiz just for people to know, do you even know how to run a command to find these things? These are very basic things. So to do that, you will need to go to CMD just like this. So you probably learn a lot from part one courses. You know how to find an IP address, right? This is so basic because you have done this in part one. So people can say, what is the IP address of your computer? You can do that in your home computer right now and you will get some sort of address like this. But if you look at it, these are IP addresses, default gateway. This would be your home router. If you're doing that, that would be going back to your Wi-Fi router that you're using. So now you're saying, hey, how do I find a DNS? So you see, now you need to know about the commands. You probably learned that in part one course. So what we need to do, we need to type IP config again, again, slash, and we're going to do all. So now we're going to get more information from this computer. So if you were in front of interviewer, manager, or technical person, this person will already know now, okay, now you know your stuff. If you are on the call with this engineer, you will do the same process and you'll say, okay, you know what? I'm going to do this. Give me one second. And our DNS server address is this right here. You see? I didn't have to go to the ethernet, open everything, and then I had to go to TCP v4 and then find this address. I have it right here. And in most cases, like I said, that's not going to be there because it's automatically assigned. You will not see anything over there. So here you can come and find out in your network what is the assignment. Of course, other things like DHCP and everything will be also the same way, but we will go to that in the next project. Now, this is going to be beyond your access in most of the companies. But what if you are the one man IT person and now you're like, okay, I do want to know where this 192.168.0.1 is coming from. What is that? Now, in this lab, you know that your whole lab is basically, this is the king right here that has everything, right? So this is the client that we are on right now. I'm going to do this. This is the client that we are on right now. So this IP address is coming from here, this server. How do I know? I can go back and do IP config on this machine and it will give you this same address, 0 0.1. The, the address of this specific machine is what? 0 0.4. So now let's go and confirm. Is that true? So I can go to PLAB. DC01, which is our domain controller, and I can show it to you here. I'm going to go to CMD and type IP config, and you can see the IP address of this machine is 0 0.1. So, where's the DNS? The DNS is right here. If you go back to the start, you can open it multiple ways. I will just show you from the server manager. And if we go back up, you see the DNS server is running on this. This is what indicates that. We can go to Tools, DNS, and this is where everything is connected. So right now you can see all of this practicelab.com machines. So whenever you join the machine to this uh, domain controller, it created that address. So you learned that from your lecture, the FQDN the fully qualified domain name, domain system, people use that. So basically, if you come over here and you see, okay, I'm on PLAB Win 10. When we log into Active Directory, you see how it's connected here. It has an address. So if I double click on it, 
this is the full address right here fully qualified domain name fqdn you probably heard that in lecture and here's the address so when somebody type p when 10 in the remote um, access when you did that in part one how did it know how did they connect it it's because when you type the, this name it has this address in there in this network so that's why it was able to do that and even if you're in the same network of course computers automatically connect to each other now you don't have to really do these things manually this is somebody who is going to have a sysadmin skills they're going to come over here like i mentioned before that dns dhcp active directory you don't go directly to it like this unless you have some special access so because this can be very messy if somebody doesn't know what they're doing and they come and start changing things a lot of things can go wrong over here so these are the addresses that that basically gets added to dns now for some reason if we delete this and there's some issues going on like you know dns is having an issue dns services is having an issue so this is a dns server right here you see all of these things like clear cache this is somebody who have this sort of knowledge then they will come back over here as an administrator and then they're going to start fixing things but if let's say an issue is like you're trying to connect to a machine and it's not working uh, an issue is over here on a dns level then it's going to be a lot of machines so you already will know automatically that this is not something you can fix you you have to get sysadmin involved in this to fix things um, but if it's like only one machine then maybe you'll have to kind of remove a machine from a domain re-add it sometimes that works if that's still not working then maybe you need to contact somebody to help you out why these addresses are not updating um, a lot of times sometimes what happens is a computer will get dropped from active directory or dns might have some issues and you will try to connect to a machine or try to log into a machine and it may say that you know it's, it's not working so you'll have to do that removing the machine from the domain and then re-adding the machine back to the domain and that usually works sometimes a um sysadmin will say or somebody will say or you yourself should know this uh, hey clear the dns cache because we updated our dns server so you're going to go back to your commands ip config and you're going to type flush dns so this is also a way to figure out some of the dns issues like you know right here you see successfully flush the dns resolver cache so sometimes this can help too if you're having issues with uh, you know, uh, having some different type of issues with the machine where you're logging in, you're doing things and it's not working. Um, so this is something that you can run on this level. Now, there's another thing about DNS too. DNS is not only limited to just computer, um, knowing computer names and everything. Remember, DNS is also a part of online uh, websites. So if you go to jobskillshare.org, it has its own DNS. Um, it, uh, if you go to any other websites uh, it has a dns um, a domain name um, added to it so the reason for that is that again it's the same concept that when you are connecting to this machine you use plab in 10 most likely when you're doing rdp you didn't use our um, ip address which you could um, so that's the same thing over here we don't want to use numbers so here we don't want to use numbers when we go to website we use jobskillshare.org and then you basically get to that website now, other than this, uh, there's really not much you can do with DNS. Of course, you can go to more details in it and, and try to, um, you know, play around with it, try to delete that entry and then come back over here and see what happens. Restart the machine, try to log in with that machine, do all that sort of stuff and, and find different type of errors if you can get. But of course, um, there's not much you can do other than this. Now, the last thing you can do is to, if there is issues with DNS, you can also go to events like this on a machine. So you can go to the event viewer. Event viewer, you have learned from part one. This is where you can see the logs or error logs. Everything that happens in the computer, in Windows computer, it keeps a track of it. If there's an issue, even successful messages comes over here. So applications have issues, you're going to go to Windows log and it's going to show you errors or you know success information security systems there's a lot of things that that can can give you more details right here you see the dns client there's a there's a warning right here so it fails to find a resource things like that so if you have some sort of issues where then you tried everything basic like you remove the computer from a 
domain re-edited that didn't work and other issues are still you're having it then of course you need to kind of go in more detail and this is something of course if you're too new to computers too new to your job it may not be an easy task you probably need help from an experienced person to tell you exactly what's going on and you also then you need to utilize communities like spiceworks.com this is another open community where you have IT professionals from all around the world and you have an issue you just put it out there give good details and you will get response so this kind of uh, is really helpful when you are dealing with um, issues with the DNS or any other log systems then I think you should come over here and utilize this uh, section where you can find more information uh, the next slide is talking about the DHCP process so uh, very quickly if somebody can anyone can tell me what are the, those process DHCP server goes through and what is DHCP first of all dynamic host configuration protocol why do we need it we use the DHCP to assign IP address to the host in the seven yes. zone. Yeah, you both are right. But my question is, when we we can assign the IP address statically, why do we need CSCP then? It's to not that, having error because you can assign, I mean, and if it is a big number, it's going to be... Exactly, this is my question. Uh, the answer that I'm looking for. Let's suppose you have 1,000 devices in your infrastructure what are you going to do as a network administrator you will go one by one no. it's over overhead so just to reduce overhead overhead we use dhcp server other than that you know it's also very helpful and handy not only handing over your ip addresses but also some another options we can use what if we have voice over IP phones? Uh, this is like, you know, uh, I'm just going beyond the concepts. Okay, just leave it. And uh, can one, somebody tell me what are the process DHCP use? What that process known as? It's a cartoon. Yeah. <laughs> Which explore all the time. Dora. Exactly. So now you will never forget this. Just remember the Dora. Because the DHCP is just, or the host machine is discovering for uh, the DHCP server and they have to go through this process called Dora process. So, so uh, yeah, before before I, I go into the slide, because this is uh, uh, this concept, um, basically very, first of all, informative. And most of the questions, to be very honest, come from the DHCP. I just want to know, uh, we have host machine here. This is your computer. And we have the DSCP server here. We have, let's say, the switch as an intermediate device, and they are connected. Currently, your computer does not have any kind of IP. Of course, you are want you want to assign IP addresses using the DSCP server. How it is gonna know about the DSCP server if it has no information? If it has no any kind of information, how on earth this computer is going to know that this is a DHCP server and I'm going to get the services from it? Any idea? Um, this might not be the answer you're looking for, but do you mean yeah. like when you, when the computer has to request the IP address from the DHCP server, like obtain ad automatically? No, when it boots up, it does not have IP information, okay? So behind the scene. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Uh, Danish, can you elaborate more? What I am asking, maybe. 
Yeah, so what he's asking basically, if a computer is turned on here for Crystal, at that point, it doesn't know anything, right? It doesn't know, it doesn't even have its own, like what is that address that it needs, that computer needs or the networking that it needs to go out and say, hey, I have this networking going on inside this machine and I'm gonna do this process. What is that what he's asking? Like even before, going after requesting. Requesting is when the networking is, everything is done, right? So what is that piece? Do you guys know? A people. Okay, but that comes when the DHCP is not handing over, but we yeah, have that's, DHCP. That's when a, a computer is already requesting and saying, I need an address, but nothing is, comes in and reply. Is this where Dora comes in? Um, okay. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, but uh, okay, no problem. I think is it from the have... network interface card? It's like, oh, hey, I don't no. have an address. Hello. Yeah, of course. Um, but uh, what will be the address? I am mean, asking how this computer is going to know and how what means what is it going to do to do to reach the PICP? When you turn it on, it's going to search for a network. Yes. And the DHCP okay. is going to respond. Yeah. Good, good, good. Yeah. Somehow you are near. Okay. Let's hit that concept. The first thing that happens, this is called discover. If we talk about the Dora, The first packet is the discover packet. And can you tell me this packet uh, will be sent by who? Oh, um, the host? Yes, because this is in question. He is looking for the DHP server. If you notice, this is a very important concept. If you have gone through this idea, you will never forget this, even if you will hit CCNP and CCI, because DHCP is going to haunt you all the time. Even if you will hit the CCI lab, you are going to do so many things on the DHCP. Uh, so let's see the source is what? 0.0.0.0. .0 .0 .0. Even it doesn't know about himself, what I am. And where it is heading? 255.255.255. So it is just blindly sending the request or discover packet to your network and have no idea where is the DSP server. Okay. Okay. So yeah, in the so same this... network. So it's actually a really good example. If you look at it, um, the computer don't have anything, not even any address. We're not talking about loop address. We're not talking about PIPA. We're not talking about any IP addresses. Now here you see 000 and it, the destination is saying 255, 255, 255, 255. Anything in that network, I am looking for someone who offers IP addresses. So, so you see the concept over here, right? Now, yes. the, mach the machine's turned on. If it has any type of networking going on, it's going to hit those areas with those. And you, there's actually a, a UDP and the port numbers are also explained. And you remember uh, people ask you in the interview, what is uh, the two ports people use for DHCP? That's where it comes from. If you look at it closely, yeah. 68 and 67, um, that's very important because if somebody asks you, I'm not talking about Dora. I'm talking about what happens on the machine. Can you explain that? Then this is what they're looking for. So this is how it that is makes going sense, yes. sorry, sorry for, can I continue Danish? Yep, yep, go ahead. Okay, so uh, source is zero, zero, destination is two, double five, two, double five, all the way to two, double five. But these also very important this is written boot p c i am coming from 68 
I'm going to wear 67. These are the protocol, uh, the pro port numbers. Means I'm going to 67 port, which belong to my DHCP server. Wherever it is, whoever it is, the possibility and the chances are we have multiple DHCP servers sitting in our LAN environment and they are handing over the same subnets. So in this scenario, my source is nothing. I don't know about myself. I'm looking for that DHCP server which is having 67 number of the port and it should be work on the UDP and it could be any destination. 255, this all it means the broadcast. This is gonna, just a minute. This server is gonna receive, this server is gonna receive, this server is gonna receive. But who will receive first is going to entertain your host machine. The second packet is offer. As you can see, we have not received the IP. It is just offering that this is the thing that I have and I can offer. The request is uh, the source now this time, as you can see, it is just like flipped. Now the source is well known and uh, not well known, uh, the, the IP address of the server, which is 10.0.0.100. And it is generating this uh, request from the well-known port 67. This is for the DHCP server. And I'm going to the client with the destination IP 255, 255, 255. Okay. So this is the offer. The third part is request. Still, I have not received the IP. Now I'm going to request uh, to the server kindly can you give me the one that you sent me as an offer still you can see the source is this and the destination is because it hasn't received any kind of information in our network interface card so that's why still it is sending to the destination port 77 with the destination broadcast again that server will receive that information and now this is uh going to offer basically uh, now at this point uh, the ip will be assigned and the server is basically acknowledgement giving the acknowledgement to the host that the offer that you are uh, looking for i have already given you so after that you are going to get the ip here and you know to obtain a Automatically, you have to select this radio box. Okay, yeah, and I, you, yeah. you in a in a, in an IT support field have seen that image, right? Tefa and Crystal. Yes. Yeah. And that's what it is. Like, you don't see that, but as soon as you click that, that button is basically you know clicked. That's where the process is happening uh, behind the scene. Then. Yeah. This is slightly like the concept of this is slightly reminding me of. Um, how TCP does its handshake. Yeah. Okay. This seems very, like the idea of it seems very similar. Yes, the idea is very similar. Yeah, it's kind of like, yeah, this, this, there's, a, there's a request, there's a reply, and it's similar, but of course it's using different protocols and different techniques to, to give out because it's leasing things and all that kind of stuff is involved. And, so you also have to remember in a DORA process, what are the things that correlate to servers and what are the things that correlate to host machine? This is also one of the very good exam uh, question as well as uh, the interview questions. So the discover and the request belong to who? Host. Host, yes. And then offer and acknowledgement belongs to 
So the DS the DSP server, yeah. So this is also very good uh, questions. They often ask offer and uh, acknowledgement belongs to what uh, the server or the host. And also when you will hit uh, you know the uh, one concept which is called as DSCP snooping. You have to remember what belongs to uh, what uh, request belongs to the host and what belongs to the server. So you can use this DHCP uh, snooping kind of uh, uh, security techniques just to avoid any uh, the rogue DHCP server. I don't want to go a lot in detail. Just get the idea. So this is just um, the animation that is going on. Discover is sent, offer, receive, then request, and then at the end. It will send the acknowledgement, and now the DHCP client will receive uh, the IP address and with some other information like the DNS, the default gateway, something like that. Any confusion? Because this is very important yeah. concept, and if you have any confusion, please do ask. I also want to add is that when you guys are listening, or you know, let's talk about DHCP. We're not just talking about Windows servers over here because this process can be for anything, right? Like any networking devices, Linux, or any other, even in even in routers, um, you also you can have Max. actually, yeah, anything. Like for example, like DHCP is not something that when we most of the time when we talk about DHCP, I think most of our Sometimes you feel like we're just talking about Windows, that DHCP, you know, you go into our, our trainings and you see sometimes we'll talk about, oh, this DHCP server. So the image in your mind, usually it's like Windows, Windows, right? But yes. that's, that, that's <laughs> not just Windows. Like we could have just Cisco devices and totally remove the Windows server out of it. And we can still give a DHCP addresses through the Cisco devices. And another example for you is in your home, you don't have any Windows servers running right now. You're still getting a DHCP addresses from your routers, right? So the process is universal. It's not just uh, you know related to Windows. But the reality is that if you are a network engineer, and Kamran can also elaborate on that, most of the time we would have to have uh, we, you will you will see that it's going to be a Windows uh, server managing the DHCP, and that's where like DHCP relays or other things will play a big role in the future. You guys will learn about that. But yeah. that's where like, we don't just use like a, like a open source, small service of a DHCP from some other device that will offer these IP addresses. And, and that's very confusing for a person who is going for networking. They may think that I'm just going to learn about Cisco, Cisco, Cisco. But here, Cisco is actually relying on Windows servers to do that kind of stuff, to be honest. Yeah. Another thing important, like we talked about, uh, just a minute, if I can go. Okay. Uh, so usually, you know, you, your Windows machine is, if the DSCP is not configured, you are going to get a PIPA. Very funny name, by the way. <laughs> but on your routers, you are not going to get any kind of a PIPA kind of thing because this is specific to Windows. In router, you get nothing, or even in the switches, because this switch interface port, you can also assign this as a DSCP. Instead of giving the IP, you can do the DSCP. But what if you don't get DHCP or the DHCP is down, you will see you will not get any kind of IP or information just like we are getting in a, a PIPA in a Windows. I have a question. Yeah. In the situation, if we have a situation like you draw earlier, we have many DHCP servers. Mm -hmm. How do we make 
the DS, well, I mean, one server, the DHCP, I'm, I'm, I mean, how the machine, I know that the, the host is going to send a discover uh -huh. uh, message. So how the DHCP server is going to respond? Because when you say 68, 67, all this... Yeah. Oh, it's only the DHCP servers, but only yes, DHCP okay. Servers. I got your idea. Uh, so basically, you know, as I said uh, earlier, that whoever the DHCP server, let's say we have the server form and we have three or four DHCP servers, which is handing over the same subnets, okay? And whoever is going to hit that discover packet, he is going to entertain and he will be interlinked with that. So is it no, kind of I, like first come first serve? Like yes, exactly. Okay. No other servers will entertain unless until they will get the request or the discover packet. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So let's uh, do a demo time. Uh, in demo, what I'm gonna do because I cannot do um, I cannot play with my LAN because this is what we are connected with session, and it will be disconnected. So I'm going to use uh, my wireless uh, uh, LAN for that. And I will show you the this all process, what we have gone through. So you need to click this capture options. Can you see? Yep. Yes. yep. Okay. So this is our LAN we were doing earlier. I don't want to play with this one because I want to IP config release and renew. If I will do that, uh, our session will be disconnected. So for that purpose, uh, I am using my, this is wireless network connections. So just click on that and double click or just to start because we had a previous uh, session going on it is saying that if you want to save no i don't want to save you can save uh, if, if for example if you have some friend or some uh, you know um, having a very good knowledge about uh, the packet analysis you can save this file and you can send via email as well so we will just do continue without saving as you can see this is connected with my wireless wireless network connection and nothing is going on. Just I mean, let me check if I'm connected with the wireless. Yeah, I'm connected. If it is disconnected, you will not see anything, but you can see nothing is going on. Still, we have reached like 19 packets so far. Okay. So I will go into my command prompt and I will do uh how many of you are familiar with this command IP config? I'll tell you a really uh, funny story about IP config release and renew. Uh, okay. My second day on my job, uh, yeah. someone was having a problem and I was like, oh, you know, I was remoted into their machine. I was like, <laughs> oh, you know what? I'm just gonna, it just seems like, the, like there's a problem with the IP address. But this okay. lady was so much older, like she didn't even know what a router was. She didn't know how she was connected to the internet. So mm -hmm. I did, I, I ran an IP release <laughs> on her machine. And then and I was I like, was... I was like, oh no, <laughs> now yes. I can't communicate with her. <laughs> she ended yes. up restarting her machine and it, yeah. uh, it gave her a new IP address. But yeah, and this happens a lot. This happens, this thing I just, happens a lot. I didn't think about it, you know? Yeah. So this thing happens a lot. And even if I do the same thing here, you will not hear me anymore. Okay, so uh, uh, you so uh, Crystal as well. You are uh, familiar with IP config release and renew. Yes. Okay, that's good enough then. So I have a question here as well. Just I mean, let me enable that thing for you. Can you see the command prompt? 
Yes. Okay. Okay, I have a question for both of you. Um, I can do IP config slash release, and this is gonna release the IP from where? Which network from, interface? From your. From. From your laptop or machine? Sorry, computer machine. No, let's suppose. Let's suppose we have two uh, network interface cards. One is okay. LAN, which is connected with my LAN network card mm -hmm. or access point. Another one, I have wireless LAN, which is also connected with access point, but through wirelessly. So if I do IP config release, what is going to happen? Which is going to release? Yeah. Sorry, I have a question. Are they both configured to DHCP? Let's say yes. Yeah. Can you specify which one you want it to release from? No, I'm just saying I'm just going to run this command IP config slash and then release. Which is going to hit first? This one or this one? I'm going to guess LAN. Okay, how about the Christian? I will say both of them. I really don't know. Okay. So it is going to hit the LAN first. Always? Always, because uh, every network interface card has some kind of identification. Like one is connected with the LAN, then two is connected with the wireless LAN, then Can three. You change that configuration? VMware, you know, sorry. Is it possible to change that configuration? So, like, can we make yeah, this the is my question. one? The, yeah, this is where I'm heading. Okay, sorry. No problem. So, what in case I just want to release the IP for my wireless LAN? Have any idea? And this is the thing most of the people really to be very nice, even they are uh, they're at the highest level network engineers but they still don't know they go manually to the wireless lan card and they will do release and renew but will not do from here any idea or i just i will uh, continue no idea i mean okay. i would i would put like the question mark to see yeah okay um yeah so which which is the option you're gonna use just quickly if you can answer um release con yes exactly this is the one so i am interested uh my wireless uh which is connected I just, just want to uh, release from that wireless LAN. So what you can do, you can type IP config, then you will do release and you have to mention, but first of all, I need to know where is where it, that is connected. If I will do just, I mean, let me clear the screen. IP config slash all. Here is the identification. It is connected on the number two. So I have to use this identification to release. Okay, so I'm going to release. And meanwhile, um, let me make sure that I'm connected to my wire shard. Sorry, so this, question. So you would just yeah. type in IP config forward slash release and then number two? Yes. Okay. And then I'm going to select two. Uh, or I think the static tool. So as you can see, it has released and we can see some activities going on. Okay. Now I need to stop this one because I am interested in a DORA process. So just let's start again uh, the same wireless LAN connection and click on start. Continue without saving and just having it. Uh, because wireless LAN currently is not connected. So this is uh, the issue. So we have to connect that one. As you can see, nothing is going on. Now from here, if you try to connect my wireless LAN or the access point, you can see 
uh, the packets is begin to generate. Look at it starting from that zero zero zero. Remember in that yes. slide we, we talked about? Yes. And I can be more specific. I forgot to mention uh, the other name of DSCP is boot P address. So this is the old name and this is the new one. I feel like that you will see in Linux versions more that boot P. I've seen that a lot. Uh, okay. But maybe they're still using that. But I've seen a lot of uh, Linux distributions using boot P like that. Yes, this is the old name. And uh, even uh, I do come across with so many troubleshooting with using boot P. We had so many guests in our hotel. And, you know, uh, a strange thing I found means uh, if I'm trying to connect using DHCP, it is not connected or it's not connecting. It's not handing over the IP. It is giving me the APIPA IP, but when I change it to the old uh, uh, the name, the boot P, uh, boot P, uh, it gives it hand over the IP. So that was a very strange scenario I come across. But then I found find out that uh, that was a problem uh, with my old Cisco uh, this uh, router, which support boot P, not uh, DHCP. So how you can, another thing you can verify the, if, if I can type DHCP, we can see we just filtered out the DHCP. But if I type here again, the boot P, you will see the same thing again. If you have any confusion, let's suppose if I, I love, add- I love how yeah. Wireshark also gives you those names, right? Look at Hefe and Crystal on the right side, said discover, yeah, discover offer, offer request. Knowledge. It's so cool that you can have that kind of, uh, you know, clarity. Exactly. The thing that we just discussed, we can actually see that. So these are the same packets we talked about Dora process. Discover, offer, request, and acknowledgement. As you can see, the source is 0000. It is going to the destination, which is the broadcast. And the protocol that I'm using is DSCP. In return, I receive the source is 1921, which is going to be offered. So this is the IP of my server, uh, this access point. It is going to give me the offer, which is going to wear my machine, basically. Then we have the request because the client machine is now going to request that offer. As you can see, still it has a, uh, that uh, source address zero and it is sending to the destination as broadcast. Then in the end, it is going to get the IP, but still, you know, acknowledgement after the acknowledgement, you are going to receive the IP. So you can see still it didn't get the IP. If I just can expand this discover so you can have the better understanding what is going on. By the way, it is used, it used the UDP, user data gram protocol. So the DSCP, I do remember in the Discord, um, this uh, uh, crystal and uh, they raised the question that this DHCP is a protocol. Which is not, uh, I can say, uh, we sometimes call DHCP protocol, sometimes we call a, uh, the service. And what is protocol? Protocol is nothing, uh, if you are familiar with the layman example, if you are prime minister or president, uh, when they come to your local, um, uh, like you come to the meet the local people or the public, they are given some kind of protocols, which is just set of instructions. Like standard. Yes, exactly. The standard. So, so what if I'm calling DHCP as a protocol? So what? Because it is following some standards. 
even the ethernet some people call ethernet a protocol some call it a standard so they're interchangeable yes exactly so not to confuse okay so uh, what i was saying uh, uh, dhcp travels on top of what protocol the dhcp oh uh, sorry the, the udp and you can clearly see here server will be using 67 for the udp port and the client will be using the port number 68 so you can take a look of these source port is 68 destination port is 67 then we have some checksum and these timestamps and then we have this dynamic post configuration protocol as well as you can see it is written protocol dhcp it is going through what discover and then you can see it is looking for some information from the uh, from the server i'm sorry i have maybe a very silly question um yes. <clears throat> wouldn't you want it to be like more um not secure that's not the word i'm looking for but wouldn't you want to use tcp instead of udp because you know it's going to because of the acknowledgement that happens before uh, Wait, okay so nothing uh, is uh, lost. yes very good question why we can't use uh that is tcp instead of udp yeah yes the problem is tcp has to go on through what sync sync act uh these things first okay and we do not need any kind of you know um the security in 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 this uh because we want to okay. get the ip as soon as possible okay okay understood because if we will use the tcp you just keep waiting maybe one minute and then you will see what two or three minutes maybe there's some kind of check some errors and then you will have to go again the process okay so and, and think about it you, you have 1000 machines and they go to sleep and then they have to be turned on again i mean this check checking again and again would be a problem right in a network so much traffic will be going flowing through these yes networking so that's that's going to be a problem that's that's why some some protocols are used for a reason like videos you know we don't we usually use udp and voice we use uh, no uh, udp anything that yeah. you know we yes. feel like we want to do this in a quicker way yeah so another so another identification to know that what kind of protocol DHCP is using, you can check the protocol number, which is 17, which correlate to the UDP. Okay. And this is enough for uh, this. Uh, you can go through these all things and these are not so difficult to understand. If you have basic idea, what is discover of a request? So as you can see, this is uh, the offer, and you can correlate with this this as a uh, destination IP, which now become has become the source, and this has become the uh, the destination. It's my host machine. To perform DHCP practice, you can click on launch sandbox if you're watching the blog video, or again, you can go back to your practice labs, type 2019 space sandbox, and then click on this, and that will open the same sandbox. So in a very simple way, I opened my sandbox lab. Um, basically, let's say we had DNS set up, a DHCP server set up on this uh, PLAB DC01. Let's say that's assume, I'm assuming, this is a server we have a dhcp set up on it so what happened is this that by if we have set up everything correctly so when i turn on this plab win 10 machine it's going to say knock knock can i get an ip address because i'm a part of your network and you are the person who gives an ip address then this person will say yes i have an ip address and i will give you this address for a certain time now if you want to test something 
in your home when you connected your laptop or Wi-Fi or even your wireless devices when you connect to the Wi-Fi how do you get internet access automatically you don't go to your cell phone or your laptops and plug in IP addresses right it automatically assigns you that address so you can go and open your IP config right now go to CMD open IP config and you are gonna get an IP address because you have internet connection I hope that's what you're using the laptop that you have connection I'm gonna go to CMD right now and I'm gonna type IP config like that so you see in this lab I will explain why this is uh, you know different but in your home it's going to show 192 168 something like that or 10 dot something address so we we know that we are getting an ip address but is it automatically done or not that is the question so people can trick you they can give you a machine just like this and they will say okay i want you to find if this machine have dhcp address or is it not a dhcp address so you could simply type ip config here the same way and we are going to do all IP config slash all. So I want you to focus on something. Look right here. It says DHCP enabled is what? No. Now that's very important because if, if you get this practical test, you will tell the person that there is no automatic IP addresses assigned to this machine. It's statically assigned. That address that I'm seeing right here somebody have manually added into this machine and then you can prove it to them by going into that uh, network and you could do this by showing it to the person if you want to uh, you know prove it you can go to run and go to ncpa.cpl ncpa.cpl and then we're going to go into properties tcpv4 properties and if you look at it right here that is what basically this represent when it says no so there's a static ip already assigned to this machine if i remove this from uh this uh, static machine because the way this these machines are set up it has to work with these ip addresses right but in your home it's going to be like this if you open the same thing in your home right now it's going to be obtained an ip address automatically for most likely 90 percent of 99 percent of of the home uh, machines it's going to be like this and when you type an ip address same thing ip config it's going to actually give you an ip address from your router whatever you're using automatically and then if you type the ip config slash all it's going to say dhcp enabled it's going to say yes why because that's why people have no issues with internet at home because everything is done for you but in real businesses most likely the computers that there are in, in an office when they connect to vpn usually people don't go and call people like okay let me put an ip address for you or let me add it for you or how do i do this it's automatically done but in some cases you will be asked to go ahead and type this ip address for this specific thing printers are another one or maybe for computer or laptops for specific reason maybe for some developers you need to put this ip address on a static so then they're not getting an automatic IP address. They're getting reserved IP addresses by an administrator. Just like DNS, there's an option for DHCP. An administrator will go in there. They will open DHCP. And then they will add these addresses and reserve some addresses. And that is something that I would highly recommend why you are doing that lab previously where you're configuring DHCP just to show you as an IT support professional, where are things done? So then tomorrow when you're doing troubleshooting on DHCP and you are looking at it and, and you know, okay, why is this enabled? But what, when it says enable and says yes, but where is this IP coming from? Then you know, okay, you know what? This is enabled and this server right here that has a DHCP server is giving an IP address. Now I understand because I did this lab. I know where it is. So tomorrow when you're trying to learn something more advanced, things are very easy for you to break that mindset of a support person to more an admin person because now you know where things are coming from and you can play around with it within these labs as well now for practice what if we want to create something for ourselves that you will be experiencing in the company like you know in real environment so let's create a dhcp server now when i say i'm going to create a dhcp server on this machine who is going to do this work in real companies this is a systems administrator most likely a person who 
works on servers, Microsoft servers. And uh, any anywhere DHCP configuration will be done by someone who have more experience than uh, IT support. But because uh, you have access, let's go ahead and do it. You have to follow step by step, every step uh, the way I'm doing in this lab, then it's going to work. Other than that, uh, if you're using your, using your own home labs, you have to do your own research on how to configure things um, based on what, what you have in your, in your lab system. So let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is to click on PLAB DC01. This is our domain controller where currently all of these machines are manually connected. Meaning somebody have went to these machines and typed the IP address. We don't want to do that anymore, right? So we're going to go back to DC01. So let's go ahead and move things. And just like uh, any other server configuration, a systems administrator will go into a server. They will click on server manager and they will basically click on manage here and they will add a role as you can see there's no dhcp running so we're going to go ahead and click on add a role and we are going to create a new role role based features and everything looks good and ip address is already there we are going to click on dhcp server right so now we are going to add a feature. We're going to click next and click next and next and install. You see, if you wanted to become a sysadmin, then you will never just do next, next, next. You would want to know why are you doing next? What does it even mean by doing next? But at this point, you're just trying to understand that where DHCP is coming from. So you have a clear understanding how DHCP works. And at your level, you will have a better understanding when there's an issue with DHCP or somebody's trying to test you for IT support uh, type of uh, you know commands and skills so DHCP installation is completed but we still have to complete the configuration so when you click on complete DHCP configuration you're basically uh, you will get a little pop-up here and then you're going to get this message for now you just click on next again and here we will use the same username password uh, that basically comes in Active Directory. We're going to click on commit. It may give you an error. That's fine. Like I, I mentioned, if you follow everything in this video, everything should work on the same same lab. But if you have your own personal machines, you may have a, may have some issues going on. So here we have created uh, this. You see both are done. We're going to click on close. Now DHCP is not fully done yet, right? You are, we are going to close this um, this. Uh, pop up and you see the that DHCP is there but it's still not configured yet so first I want to explain to you what's going on in this client machine so when we go to this client machine this address uh, is done by lab uh, support you know when they use it they, they try to configure this so everything is working smoothly you can see internet access is working because somebody have added that address for you so if you go to CMD I'm in a client machine right now and uh, I'm just going to type ncpa because I want to get to the networking part ncpa.cpl ncpa.cpl if I enter it just takes me to the network and if I go to properties and I go to TCP IPv4 properties you see this information is already there so this this is an IP address of 192.168.0 uh, that four and and that's it like this probably this is five this is six so this there's this not much after that right so what we're going to do i'm going to click on automatically uh get an ip address if i click ok i probably will lose my connection if i close this so there you go i, close, uh, I lost my connection but remember in your lab if you lose a remote connection you can always go to the console which is right here now that's exactly why i love these lab because you can get to the back to the machine even if you lose connection so right now we have lost the connection because there's no configuration. This machine is saying, I'm looking for an IP address, but where is that, right? So right now we're going to go back to this machine. Oops, we're going to put a password. Now remember, these passwords are coming from in your lab. If you're ever wanting to know which what is the password, you can click on here, this little icon. So now it says identifying it's looking for an ip address automatically and that's how it's done in most of the companies when you plug in the machine you plug them or you connect them to wi-fi your home machine it automatically goes out to your router and says i need an address 
uh, or maybe your well, however your configuration is done it's going to ask for a dhcp address to say i want that ip address where is that so there's no ip address set up yet so we need to go back to our domain controller because we know this machine is connected to this domain we don't have to worry about dns at this point that's something we're not touching right now so we're going to go back to our tools and here is the dhcp um uh, you know features but before doing that what we need to do we need to go back to services and we're going to open services and here what i'm going to do i'm going to go to dhcp and i know it's running but i'm going to restart it anyways i just want to make sure that it's running correctly so you run the DHCP server services again, you go to tools, you open DHCP, and now we need to configure DHCP because that machine is looking for an IP address, right? So we're going to come back and we're going to work on IPv4. So here, if you right click on IPv4, you see that we have to create a new scope because if you click on it, there is no scope created yet. It says add a scope. So if I right click, I go to new scope. I'm telling this DHCP that I want you to give this type of IP addresses uh, for that machines when they connect. So I'm going to type scope one, click next. So right here, I am making that decision right now. So I'm going to do 192, 168, zero. And I know it's like one, two, three, four, five, six. So let's just start with 20 because I feel like maybe that's definitely not going to be here, right? So 192, 168, I'm going to do 0, and then here I'm going to do 50. So 20 to 50, if anybody is outside of that manual, if we remove them from the manual configuration, and I say I want automatic address, then where does it come from? From this 20 to 50. It's going to give one IP address from here. I'm going to click Next. So ex exclusion, we don't need that yet. We're going to click Next. This is just that, you know, uh, when you learn about systems administration, you're going to learn about DSCP in more detail. Like this is the amount of days after that it's going to do query for new IP address or maybe same one. I'm going to click next. And here, yes, I want to configure these options now. And so this is important because in this lab, you do need to have a internet connection. So you need to get that router address. So basically, if you want to know what is the router address, if you don't know, I'm just going to click and show you another command if this is another interview questions. So if someone say, hey, what is the gateway address or what is the router address in your machine? You're going to type ipconfig slash all. So what is our uh, gateway address? I'm going to show it to you. This right here, gateway address. This is what we're looking for right now. And we already know that DNS is the same server, right? So the DNS of this server is 0.1. But that's what we're looking for, the router, the gateway address. Okay, so it's 192.168.0 and 250. So I'm going to add that. I'm going to click next. And now again, as I mentioned before, that our DNS is the same server. So that address is also there, 192.168.0.1. So this IP address cannot be assigned because that's the part of the server. So we're going to go ahead and click on add. It's going to go out there and uh, basically add it right here. So we have 192.168.0.1, which is the correct win server. We don't need to worry about that. I'm going to click next, next and finish. So now our scope is active and it's going to say if anybody wants to look for an IP address, I'm going to give it out. I'm going to lease it out. So if I come over here and let's say if somebody say, hey, I just configured the DHCP server. Can you go ahead and uh, restart the machine or uh, do the IP config renew and things like that? That machine will get an IP address. And, and while we were doing that, it's already got an IP address from that DHCP server because it's always looking right. So the one way is to if it was not, you could do disable and then enable. That will do the same process. It's going to go out there. And it's going to grab an IP address from the server. So right now it's already uh, uh, grabbed it. I don't know why this is showing internet, uh, no internet access. That's basically we may have to restart this machine 
to get the access going but the IP address is already assigned so if I come over here to do the domain controller one more time and just show it to you if I refresh look at this the first IP address that we have created is already assigned automatically to this machine why because we removed the manual part and we say go ahead and look for an IP address if there is any server that's going to give it to you and here you go you already got that access uh, the, 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 um, the uh, IP address is given and then the internet connection is also back through that IP address because we have configured things correctly so that is a cool thing you guys can try because now you understand everything from this one lab that how a machine looks for an IP address where is it coming from where is the main configuration and then you can do uh, different things like you know you can do like this something like IP config and people may do this say hey can you release an IP address for me please and wait for like few minutes because I'm doing some work on the DHCP so you're gonna do like this so you went ahead and you released an IP address right basically it's gonna go out there and it's gonna release an IP address and and basically if you do IP config again you see it got a PIP address meaning this this address is not a uh, an address that you can use for networking right now in this environment and that has uh, basically you won't have any internet connection things are not going to work on the bottom you see that it's gone that little uh, icon so if you see this address then there's something wrong either with your DHCP with your cable or with some other things that are happening right now on your computer that may be uh, a lot of issues you have you have to troubleshoot your cable and, and things like that maybe take the same cable plug it into other machine if that's working then you have a problem with this machine or you may have a problem with your DHCP so right now the person say you know what go ahead and re uh, uh, you release it but now you renew it again so I'm gonna go ahead and renew oops not typing things correctly today so now it's going out there and it's looking for an IP address back from that server, back from the DHCP. It went ahead and grabbed the same IP address again, automatically. I did not put anything manually, and this is also going to change in a, in a few seconds. This is what we are talking about. If somebody wants to test you on DHCP, they may do things like that and kind of let you know, this is an IP address. Uh, how can you get, get that IP uh, address from DHCP? Everything is working on our end. What command would you use? You're going to say, oh, you know what? We can use this. Or you can come over here and you can disable and enable this again. And it's going to go back and do the same thing. And grab the IP address. And that's for you now to further play around with this. And if you do it one time like this, like if you configure DHCP and you follow every step like how I have done it, you restarted the service the way I done everything step by step, you did not miss anything. I don't think you would have any issues creating your own DHCP environment in the same lab. But don't mess with DNS, right? So now you have that. Go ahead and play around with DHCP. Learn more as, as much as you can. It's really free for you to open these options too. You can go and try to play around with this watch some online videos and come back and start to mess around with DHCP as much as you can get the confidence because at the end of the day if you want to become a sysadmin later on you want to become that experienced engineer you really, really need to come back and play around with these options and, and mess around with it okay and troubleshoot it so that's it for today uh, we'll come back to in another project thank you so much